Oh. I can't get attention now. Oops, I got the lowest chair, I think. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I call this meeting of uh, the council to order on September 19th, 2023 at 7.07. Sorry about the slight delay. We had some internet problems, but uh, we're good to go now. We'll stay seated for a moment of silent reflection. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll move to the mayor's okay. I'd like to extend a happy 80th birthday to former mayor Harold Blackbird. Harold is a familiar face as he continues to deliver the mail in our community something that he has been doing for 46 years, beginning in 1977. The Ontario East Municipal Conference was held in Ottawa from September 5th to September the 8th. Thanks to Michelle Mantefell, Cameron Montgomery, and Councilor Robinson for representing our Bono Robert Force at the conference. On Wednesday, September 15th, 2023, I attended the cashing in on cycle tourism workshop in Armfry. The workshop was an opportunity to explore the opportunities for towns and villages that welcome trail riders to stop, shop, and stay. Businesses can register for a bicycle-friendly certification to attract visiting cyclists. The 2019 cycling study identified 1.6 million cyclists in Ontario that contributed $644 million in tourism dollars to the economy. The study found that cyclists who visit rural communities for trail tours and cycling opportunities spend more approximately $404 per state, and stay longer than people traveling in automobiles. The Ontario by Bike.ca website is also a free program for businesses. Brentford County is recognized as a cycling destination with the Algonquin Trail and the KMP Trail, which covers 358 kilometers. Brentford County has published the Ottawa Valley Cycling Map, which identifies a 188 kilometer loop the lakes, which involves Lake Dory Golden Lake and Round Lake, the cycling route with a large portion within our municipality. The popularity is also growing for gravel routes and winter fat biking, and our quiet rural roads are becoming a popular attraction for winter fat bike enthusiasts. I've invited Craig Inferger, a regular year round cyclist, to speak to Council at a future meeting on this growing tourism market. Council should also consider branding North of Bona Wilberforce as a bicycle friendly community. And the Recreation Committee is planning a fall bus tour to Pumpkin Inferno at Upper Canada Village on Sunday, October the 22nd, 2023. The bus is able to accommodate up to 50 people. And not on the uh, on the uh, address, but just wanted to let people know that Councilor Burns and I attended the kickoff of Legion Week in Evenville on Sunday. And uh, Councilor Burns had the lucky table there. <laughs> I had to leave, so I left my tickets with Councilor Burns. And uh, I won the 50 50. Councilor Burns won the 50 50, and his niece won the 50 50, <laughs> all from the same table. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> So that is my marriage address. And I have a motion that the September 19th, 2023 marriage address be accepted as presented, moved by Councillor Wright to Schoenfeld, seconded by Councillor Robinson. Councillor Burke? Yes. Councillor Buckwell? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Wright to Schoenfeld? Yes. I know that. My family. I also brought some information that uh, the county has put together on cycling maps and routes in uh, Renfrew County. So if anybody wants to have a look at those maps, they here. Okay. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof?
Seeing none, I do apologize once again. I forgot to read our uh, acknowledgement, so I will do that now. As we gather this evening, I would like to acknowledge on behalf of Council and our community that we are meeting on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people. We would like to thank the Algonquin people and express our respect and support for their rich history. And we're extremely grateful for their many and continued displays of friendship. We also thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. So I invite this adoption of the minutes, and I have a motion that the September 5th, 2023 regular minutes be accepted as presented. Moved by Councilor Berg, seconded by Councilor Buckle. Any additions, corrections, or omissions? Yeah, Councilor Berg. Yeah, I'm, I'm 15, go council in closed session. They dismissed my name there. Okay. Stop, stop that. Okay. Any other? Corrections, seeing none, Council Burns? Yes. Council Buckwald? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rector Schoenfeld? Yes. And yes, that's very good. <clears throat> we have no delegations tonight, so item number seven is by law enforcement. And I have a motion that council accepts the municipal law enforcement options report of information and further provides directly to staff. And I'm going to move in a second. Moved by Councilor Wright and Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Robinson. Comments, questions? Councilor Wright and Schoenfeld. Do you know how much um, it actually costs the township for the municipal? Like, how much? How much of a budget gets devoted to our current bylaw office? Um, so to date, uh, this year I believe it's less than two thousand um, dollars, and I would imagine in twenty twenty two it would have been less than ten thousand dollars. And um, the seventy two hundred plus HST that's for as many calls as. As or is it after a certain number of calls, then we pay more? Is that like my understanding? Is that... Oh. <laughs> my understanding is that um, it's for there's no cap um, okay. on the uh, usage that. The, I think it's Council Robinson. Um, it was the cost for ten thousand for the train. It's not the cost between the last. So that would have been. So I will provide the actual cost for twenty twenty three to council. Okay, thank you. I like the idea of uh, having bylaw enforcement. And I like the idea that uh, somebody else, other than our own staff, does it. Uh, the fall that does run through and the other municipalities that provided the the uh, Alexa quote that uh, Adams and Bromley that's what they pay for the service. <laughs> I like the idea that uh, they provide the service, they do it after hours and on weekends, and it wouldn't tie up our staff. And I think it just makes sense moving forward rather than eliminating the service altogether because people have gotten uh, accustomed to having that availability of, of a bio enforcement officer. So, that's my thought. Council, so for the option two, it's really Monday to Saturday. 
right? Yeah. And then, so then if something were to happen on a Sunday, I imagine you could call in and they'd investigate that the next day or within a certain amount of time. So yes, there is an emergency service complaint line, which is monitored 24 seven. And if it was to call with a very emergency uh, nature, um, they would respond to this outside of the normal operating hours. Um, the call service, is there a cost to it? Mm -hmm. um, that's done on evenings and weekends. Sorry? For evenings and weekends, which is often free. So yes, there would be a, a, a cost to for uh, a service provider to, to provide that service for us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was there any idea of what that could be? Possibly. Uh, no, unfortunately, I don't have that. Because I think that would, would help in the decision. Councillor Buckwell. Uh, just on option three, uh, I've had dealings with Northern Communication uh, with another township that I was helping out. Um, that There is a fee for that, but again, that call service doesn't provide any actual bylaw service. They're simply a dispatching system. So they would receive the calls uh, and then prioritize those calls based on the instructions that we gave them. And then they would either call our own bylaw staff or contract staff. So um, option three isn't really a bylaw service on its own. It's okay. uh, just a way to get the phones answered after hours. Thank you, Councilor Thank you. Uh, Dr. Schoenfeld, Just with option four, do you have any idea what how much the standby be standby fee would be? So it would be uh, uh, so the township would uh, uh, set the standby fee for. But would it be like fifty dollars a weekend or a hundred dollars? Uh, based on what we pay other uh, staff for standby, it could range from a hundred to one hundred fifty dollars per week. Yeah. And that would just be really for the weekends. We still wouldn't have anybody for the week nights. So, so that would be uh, a standby pay for uh, after regular hours. Okay. So, so for that day, okay. And I don't want to go to the Right, please do that. Council Buckwell. Um, the other thing with option four we, we can consider is we can set guidelines as to whether or not we want them to be responding Monday to Friday night. Uh, we can put that right within the standby agreement. So maybe we only want to have uh, standby or evening calls on the weekend, which uh, should reduce some of our standby costs uh, as far as having to put somebody on standby for the whole week. Um, as somebody who's on who's on unpaid standby 24-7 when I'm not away at work, um, it can be pretty onerous to have to be available 24 hours a day for those seven days. So I don't think you'd want to have one person avail uh, on, on standby for those for seven evenings in a row. It might be better to focus on maybe Friday, Saturday or Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, to start. Because if something happens Monday to, Monday to Friday, um, file officers in the office the next day and could investigate it the next day. And if it, if it becomes a problem, then maybe we have to give them some guidance. But um, I don't see a need for being on call seven days a week. So I guess I'm looking for some direction then from council, um, which option we would like staff to bring more information back on. I will be Councilor Burke. Option number two, I like. I think. Sorry, um, I think I'd like to find out what our actual costs are because we we have had the um, bylaw enforcement officer for more than a year. And I know that one of the things that we did, we invested in training. So to just disband it after having invested that money, to me, it's like throwing the money away. So I'd like to find out what the actual costs are before we make a decision. That's what I just want. I'd also like to find out what the actual cost is that we've, <clears throat> in the last couple of years, 
along with like the option for if we were to have um, a standby procedure as Councilor Buckle had suggested, if it was like, let's say Friday, Saturday, Sunday, how much that would actually cost us? Because I'm thinking the other days of the week still could be covered by our bylaw officer. Mm -hmm. You know, and the other thing too is at some point, I think we have to define what an emergency is because an emergency for me might be totally different than for the bylaw officer. Sure. So even in option three where it said uh, respond to emergencies, we'd have to say what that would be. Like dog barking might be an emergency to the person, but like horses running down the road is really an emergency. Mm -hmm. Well, I think <clears throat> uh, in option four, um, it talked about putting the policies together and maybe putting a framework mm -hmm. um, to exactly number one what the time frames are, but also what those emergency calls entail. And I guess my concern goes along with Mayor Bros is the fact that you know our bylaw officers other are also like the lead um launch of firefighters, and there could be a possibility that they do get overworked and burnt out. That's why to me, like an option two to me isn't totally a no. Not, but I do feel bad because we invest in uniforms and training and time to write in all our bylaws and all that other stuff just to have it for a few years and then get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Councilor Buckwell? Um, I just have a couple comments. Um, one, I think option four from a cost perspective would probably be our, our least expensive and would allow us to use um, the staff that we've trained. Having said that, there's a lot to be said for option two, where you're taking it uh, to a totally ind independent group. Uh, the concern that I would have is I would want uh, firm numbers on what they would be charging us as opposed to a neighboring township and what exactly that would cover as far as number of service calls. Um, so I guess my request or my preferred option would be to uh, get a firm offer from the contract provider and compare that to option four standby because again uh councilor ricky shanefeld is right all three of our bylaw people are involved with the fire department um one of them is a full-time doing full-time work elsewhere for the prop for the township um yeah it can be pretty tiring so i i like the idea of option two again if the pricing uh, is all inclusive and within that uh, that price range. So I guess what I'm hearing from councilor from council is that uh, they'd like staff to come back with more information on option two and option four, and bring that back to uh, next meeting. Yes, please. Yeah. And I see a, a nod of hand. So. I will. I'm just going to add that on the uh, <clears throat> the resolution that uh, more information be provided on option two and option four. And I'll call the vote. Uh, Councilor Burt? Yeah. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yeah. Councilor Reggie Shonko? Yes. I mean, yes. Thank you. Very, thank you. I think 7.2 is the OEMC report. And I have a motion that Council accepts the OEMC conference summary report as information. Moved by Council Burt, seconded by Council Ray Shonko. Any comments, questions? Council Ray Shonko. Uh, so, Councilor uh, Robinson, did they ever talk about in number one, tourism is bigger in Eastern Ontario? Like, did they ever talk about so many ideas? Um, they went into some specifics. Mm -hmm. I think um, basically it, it's looking for the communities to come up with some really innovative ideas. Um, yeah. Okay, and then in number three, harnessing the bioeconomy, anything that our waste recovery could use there? It was the one, the, the case study that they had was actually a farm 
that you know, I know there's also one I think in West Week that gets it. Oh, sure. Is, it's a bio digest, right? Yeah, exactly. And but what was different about this one was that they um, also um, used some of the other uh, activities in the community mm -hmm. and incorporated, like, for example, they were getting grain from another community in order to create um, uh, energy okay. for doing, doing their operation. All right. So. And, then, and then the last one is about regional housing. Did they ever talk about, like, if you were, let's say, in the country and decided to do a new build, that there could be some kind of grant money? Like, let's say you were willing to do a duplex or have a rental, let's say, rent your basement out to people looking for it. Did they ever talk about it? Well, I think one of the, the, the um, this was actually the presentation was done by a warden. Mm -hmm. in, and, um, one of the things that they're talking about is looking at alternatives. Yeah, because I just think sometimes if you're building a new house, but mm -hmm. you put in mind to put a granny suite on it, let's say, but you could use that to rent out, mm -hmm. you know, or or make your basement accessible to what could be a rental place where the government would say, if you can guarantee me there'll be a rental property on this house for like five years or 10 years, we'll give you that much money. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then you're going to have to pay back. I don't know. I'm just yeah. like right. thinking outside the box so that you could use a new build mm -hmm. as a rental maybe spot or something. Yeah, I think that, wasn't that a program that they was rolling out? That, um, because I know that the um, the county had grants that if you wanted to put a build on for for somebody to live, that, that like a kind of a grand suite. Like a grand suite that somebody that as a rental option mm -hmm. that, that was available. It was a, a program they had talked about, mm -hmm. but because of the new building on Lee and Douglas Street in Pembroke, they had to direct the funding to that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. don't think it's off their radar, but it wouldn't be happening this year. It right. might be a year or two down the road. Yeah. yeah. I just think it's an alternative way that people, like, you know, mm -hmm. instead of having a new apartment or whatever, if somebody knew they were going to get X amount of dollars when they're building something new, maybe they consider like a grand suite or something. Yeah. Like that. Well, I know a few people that I've spoken to when we were doing the affordable housing option mm -hmm. was definitely looking at um, that as an alternative. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I think one of the programs that was talked about, not in this, but I didn't sign on is. But was um, utilizing like seniors, right. that that sharing program. Right. That was one of the other things that was was talked about a fair bit. Is basically this home share, mm -hmm. where that um, um, especially in communities that have um, universities or second right. or secondary education, right. that you can rent out your um, that part of your home. And then you have somebody that's there that's going to help you with the, the shopping of the that's snow cool. and that kind of stuff. Right. So those are all the things that will be entertained as well. Okay, thank you. And apparently, the delegates that were there like the new location. Yes. And uh, I guess it's going to be in Ottawa again and then next, next year. Yeah. And uh, hoping that attendance will improve even more over this year. Yeah. Because they the the um lineup of um presenters were very, very good. And um so and it was much more accessible than the colonial location. Thank you. So seeing no other comments, I'll call the vote. Council Burns? Yes. Council Buckwald? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rector Sokol? Yes. And we had very good. <laughs> Item 7.3 is the action item update. And motion of council accepts the action item list update report as information. Moved by Councilor Burke, seconded by Councilor Robinson. And any questions, comments? Councilor Rector, phone call. I forget, do we get this once a month or just once every two months? Uh, Usually three times a year. Okay. And then how do you decide on the timeline for completion or do you? 
just when they get completed, then like the next report, um, conveyance of land with the road instead of being 20 might be 40%. Yes, yes. We always update it with any additional work that been done. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, Councilor Bird? Yes. Councilor Buckwald? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reggie Schoenfeld? Uh, yes. And yes. Barry, thank you. And then 7.4 is the treasurer's update. I have a motion of council accepts the treasurer's update report as information. Moved by Councilor Robinson, seconded by Councilor Rickard Tolkoff. Comments, questions, Councilor Rickard Tolkoff. How do we notify the public then? Like because it wasn't done and now we have to do it. How do you feel about doing it? Oh, so we'll we'll put it on our social media. Uh, we'll uh, uh, give our normal channels, poster, uh, our um, our net. Yeah. And is that something we have to do, or it's just being nice to the public to do it? Is it in our procedure bylaw or something? It's not in our procedure bylaw per se, but it's uh, it's, it's uh, like you said, it's uh, it's uh, it'll be welcomed by our residents. Yeah. Councillor Buckle. Uh, yeah, just a question. I recall the discussion, but did we ever amend our fees and services bylaw to reflect that increase? I don't recall it being pro being processed. We haven't even noticed, so that's another step that we will need to take. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none, Councillor Burbs? Yes. Councillor Buckwald? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Reggie Schoenfeld? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Very good. Thank you. Item 7.5 is our National Truth and Reconciliation Day. And I have a motion that Council accepts the National Truth and Reconciliation Day report as information. Moved by Council Robinson, seconded by Council Buckwell. Comments? Questions? Seeing none, Council Burt? Yes. Council Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Becky Schoenfeld? Yes. And you met? Perry, thank you. Item 7.6 is regarding the municipal sign policy, and I am working with Council accepts the sign policy report as information and provides direction to staff. And I got a mover and a second, please. Moved by Councilor Wright to Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Buckwald. Comments, questions? Councilor Wright to Schoenfeld. I like number three. And then we'd also, I know, just get it rocking and rolling, it'll be a little while, but then we'll also always get an annual fee. And I think it's important that we are consistent. I certainly agree with uh, Councilor Regis on both. Yes, mm -hmm. so do I. We need a policy because signs are going up on our road allowances and there's no standard. And yeah. it, would be nice. it would be nice to have some consistency. Yeah. And you can't regularly put you in. That's right. So I guess what I'm hearing is that uh, council would like to direct staff to enact a sign policy or bylaw. No, no problem. Thank you council for you. Thank you very much. Thanks. And I'll call the vote. Thank Councilor Burke. Yes. Councilor Buckwald. Yes. Councilor Robinson. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Yes.
And at the moment, we've all been waiting for the uh, public work report. So, uh, seven, item 7.7 7 is the cell road range. I have a motion that council accepts this report, drainage issue 210 cell road, and that council approves the placement of the cross culvert within cell road located at 210 cell road west of the property's second entrance. And again, we're in a second, and moved by Council Robinson, seconded by Council Bird. And if I could, maybe I'll just turn to Amy and ask for a little background. Sure, thank you, uh, Mayor Rose. Um, so there was a, uh, a public request to investigate uh, drainage or ponding, exactly that is, uh, within 210 Cell Road. Uh, so I went out with uh, the uh, Public Works uh, lead hand and we uh, kind of reviewed the area. So the, uh, the homeowner at 210 Cell Road had uh, purchased this recently in the last few years. So it was an existing um, uh, turnaround or turnabout driver with two entrances off of Cell Road uh, with no existing culverts in either of them. Um, at first glance, I thought, well, it's a simple process to, uh, to put a culvert in the lower end uh, uh, driveway. Uh, but after review and, and doing some great uh, inspections, that would have caused a bigger issue because you still would have put, had to put a cross culvert in to go to the south side of the road. But the north side of the road is lower than the south side of the road, which means the field on the south side of the road would back surge and cause more problems for 210 cell road and his neighbor 190 cell road uh, because it was a negative grade. Um, so the best option is actually what the homeowner had uh, requested to put it within the boundaries between the two uh, entrances of the property. And uh, because the the uh, east driveway uh, was on the crest of a hill and the west driveway was heading down towards the valley of the cell road. Um, so it was a little bit higher than the lowest point of, uh, between 210 and 190, which would allow it to get into the south ditch and then the Excel down, down the way. It is quite a large um, field on the south side, um, so the surge would have been quite significant and it probably would have flooded uh, 210 and 190 if that cross culvert was installed at the lowest point of the, uh, of the road. So the best option to uh, to help the uh, homeowner 210 out and to get uh, the uh, water expelled between the drivers is to put a cross culvert within cell road between the two entrances at his property. Uh, it, is, it is to note that uh, the water is caused by both the municipal road and the more property. It's not just uh, the, the township's issue, I guess, if uh, the water has been expelled from his property driveway plus the, the road. So um, we do hold some responsibility uh, for, the, for the water being within the two driveways. So uh, the best option, I think, would be to to uh, locate a culvert across the road between the two entrances uh, and eliminate causing more problems by putting it at the lowest point of uh, between the property lines of 210 and, and 190. So across, that cross culvert is just, you're, you're going to dig up Zell Road and put a culvert there. And Absolutely, yes. Okay, I was trying to figure out what it is. Yeah. I, I, I apologize. So, no, no, I mean, it makes sense when you said it, but I was yeah, just trying to figure out like, where we're going, like, the yeah. Cross culverts are within the road allowance, okay. and then uh, entry culverts are within the drivers. Perfect. I, I thanks, thanks for clearing that up. No, that's my fault, not your fault. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. Councilor Burt, yes. Councilor Buckwell, yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reichel Schultz? Yes. I mean, yes. Very thank you. Item 9.1 are non action items. And I have a motion that correspondence items 9.1.1 to 9.1.11 be accepted as information. Moved by Councilor Bird, seconded by Councilor Robinson.
And any comments or uh, any one of the items that council would like to pull out and we discuss? Being done, Council Burke? Yes. Council Buckholz? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rector Schoenfeld? Yes. Okay, yes. Very thank you. Item 9.2.1 is the Renford County Regional Science and Tech Fair. And I have a motion that council donate $200 as an individual sponsorship sponsorship from council's donation budget. And I get a mover and a second. Moved by Councilor Byrne, seconded by Councilor Robinson. Comments or questions? Seeing none, Councilor Burt. Yes. Councilor Buckwald. Yes. Councilor Robinson. Yes. Councilor Reiter Schoenfeld. Yes. Uh, yes. That's very right very good. Item 9.2.2 .2 is the uh, Egabel and District Senior Needs. And I have a motion that council hereby appoints and it's blank to be the municipal representative to attend the conversation cafes as part of the Egabella District Seniors Reimagining and Reactivating Communities Project. Do we have a volunteer? Or? Well, I, I will be there as a board member. But, no. And she had her hand up. <laughs> I, okay, Mr. I Singer. Was, <laughs> Mr. No, I had my hand up because I'm going to be there anyway. Okay. That's all I was going to say. I wasn't volunteering. Is Council good with Councillor Robinson uh, being part of that group? Yes. I see you nodding. Yes. Okay. Let me move in a second. When is it anyway? <laughs> oh, you should know. You're going. <laughs> no, no, I want to make sure. I think it's it a, was in the, uh, I think it was in the, uh, it letter. says Thursday, okay. September the 21st. Right. Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. Third Thursday of every month. Yes. From one to three at the Echo Center. Mm -hmm. And I still need to move in a seconder. Moved by Councillor Reggie Schoenfeld, seconded by Councillor Birch. And so will be Councillor Ryan. Now I'll call the vote. Councillor Burns? Yes. Yeah. Councillor Buckwell? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Councillor Reggie Schultz? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe yes. Let's carry. Item 9.2.3 is the uh, County of Renfrew, and this is in regards to development fees. And the motion, oh, the motion reads that Council does not support scenario one in the presentation prepared by Watson and Associates, whereby development charges would apply to all residential and non-residential development within Renfrew County. And I got a mover in a second. Moved by Councillor Byrne, seconded by Councillor Buckle. Comments? Questions? That's right, it's on phone. Why does the county not support it? Mm -hmm. so they, what the county has done is they haven't made a decision yet. They've uh, had a presentation from the consultant that uh, brought the report on development fees to the county. And they this is the presentation that they've shared with all the lower tiers. They'd like to get some feedback from the lower tier municipalities to see how much support or non-support there is within the rest of the county. The reason that the county, they actually like the idea of development fees because of the growth that's happening in our prior rent through and Petaluma in particular. They have to start addressing some of the growth challenges as far as maybe widening roads, putting in more signal crossings, et cetera. 
And this has never been part of the asset management plan. The asset management plan was only there to replace what's existing. But when it involves new development, there's no provision in the asset management plan currently for growth. So they would like to incorporate developing charges so that as those communities or any community grows, that the development charges pay, pay, <clears throat> excuse me, pay for new services. But we don't have development charges in our municipality. If this gets approved at the county level, then there would be development charges that would go back to the county. And if we went back to the county, then it's up to the county to say, like, I don't know, let's just say $100,000 was collected from the various municipalities. Then somebody like Petawawa would say, I would like $80,000 of that to put in new traffic lights or widening of roads. Is that possibly what could happen? Even though there are monies, they could go to somewhere else in the municipality? I think the intent is that uh, the development charges, yes, would go into the uh, the asset management plan fund mm -hmm. and then as growth projects happen yes that money would be used i don't know if it would be percentage based or if it would just go according to the uh, priorities that would be set and so so like it would be not advantageous for the smaller municipalities because we'd be having development charges, but we never really reap the benefits of it. I guess you could say if we were driving somewhere and the road was widened, I guess that would be a benefit, but not. It would be an indirect benefit and not a direct benefit. It would be an indirect benefit, and that's the county's position is that if we improve the infrastructure, if we improve road networks, et cetera, in those areas like our prior rent through Walla, uh, Whitewater region, the most of the growth is happening along the Highway 17 corridor, and those are the areas that are needing some changes as far as whether it's wider roads or more signal crossings. You know, right. that's the the county's position is that yes, it's not directly benefiting every municipality, but indirectly, we all benefit because we're improving the county as a whole. So maybe I misunderstood where the development charges was going to be levied was on the portal, or is it going to be throughout percentage? Well, there's the county is looking at two possibilities. One is just along the highway 17 corridor, yes. but the other one is countywide. So and that was where I, I sort of said I have to read this again was one of the three scenarios was the 417 corridor. Yeah. The other was that basically any development within the county or municipality, irrespective of the municipality, would have a levy based on it, whether they're going to benefit from those directly benefit. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Now, I guess the question is, if the county is putting on a levy, um, how does that relate with our building permits, or do we also have the position to say you have development charges? Maybe that's a good question that staff can answer. Sorry, and the question again what? The question is, okay, the county is putting on a levy for EC charges. Mm -hmm. Um we are where we are getting our revenue is from the building permits. Mm -hmm. Would that then would there be a consideration then to say, okay, fine, along with the building permits, that there's a possibility that you add something to the these charges? The municipality would. Well, yes. So, so we would have to go through the similar process that the county of Vancouver is doing right now. So they mentioned the study uh, to, to look at the relevant charges. And if they uh, proceed to uh, approve one of the scenarios, then they will need to do a bylaw. So there's there's a uh, a process you need to go through uh, to implement development charges in your municipality. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but, well, okay, but yeah. And probably when they develop their bylaw, they would have a set schedule of fees for mm -hmm. their, whether it's buildings or whatever mm -hmm. percentage that they would want to uh, add on to. Mm -hmm. And we would just collect that and it would 
the uh, pass through to the county? Is that the uh, way it would work, or do we know? Oh, uh, we it's not clear in the report how it would be uh, fee would be collected. Okay. I guess from a personal standpoint, I'd rather have the 417 having the churches, right? And on well, that, of course. You know, but then realistic. you could still revisit to see how that went, the money's collected, and how would it actually affect the municipality? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, to me, it just looks like an extra tax that we will be charging somebody. Indirectly, we will take the time to process it all. We will get nothing from it, mm -hmm. and there's a good chance we will never take from that pool of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that's sort of the, the balancing act that you that we're looking at. Um, the other thing too is if in our municipality we decide that we're going to be putting a road in, and it's a road that you know that is an expense, and usually that is what DC a lot of the DC charges goes to is to development of of, of expanding infrastructure. So how does that affect us when we're in need of some of that? Will we be able to? Say, you know. That's right. Like so, for instance, in Golden Lake, if we wanted to extend that sidewalk, mm -hmm. like the one resident wanted to, could we apply for that that pool of money because we've contributed to it? Mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't contributed yet, but, but potentially. If that's right. Council uh, Yeah, I'm just following following the discussion there, and I don't see that being an option. Uh, an option because as I understand it, um, this development charge being done by the county is to go towards county assets. So I don't see anything that makes it appear as though we would be able to access this for lower tier uh, projects. Even even if it was even if they were taking those development charges from across the the entire county from all the townships, um, as I understand this. Those funds would be owned by the county and would go towards county projects. Mm -hmm. So, I'm from my perspective, I think if we have an area that's experiencing the growth, um, that's experienced the, experiencing those potential extra needs for county resources, I think that's where the uh, if the, it's going to go ahead, I think that's where the development charges need to be levied. Uh, I don't think they need to be levied across. Uh, municipalities that are only having a one or maybe two percent growth. You are correct, Council Buckwell. It's this is for county assets. These development charges. If we wanted uh, development charges, we would have to bring in a bylaw on our own for our own municipality, and then there would be two charges: one for the municipality, and on top of that would be the. Uh, development charges for the county. So right now the uh, the motion means that we're not in support of the uh, development charges for all of our resident and non-resident development. Unless council wants to go in a different direction. Definitely not in support of so I'll call the vote. Council Bridge? Yes. Council Buckwell? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rector Song? Yes. And a yes as well as Terry. Yeah. And item 10 is bylaws. And I have a motion now, therefore, the Council of Northern Ottawa Water Force enact the following bylaw, bylaw 2023-44, which is a road use agreement between Fabian and Griffith. And I'm going to move her in a second here, moved by Council Bird, seconded by Council Buckwell. Comments or questions? Seeing none, Council Bird. Yes. Council Buckwald? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Reggie Schoenfeld? Yes. I mean, yes. Very, thank you. And item number 13, oh, sorry. Before that is, uh, are there any matters of urgency? Any notices of motion? 
And in 13.1 is uh, reports from committees, and this is on recreation. I have a motion that council accepts the recreation committee report as presented and approves of the listed recommendations. And I got to move into seconder. Moved by Councilor Reichel Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Buckwell. Comments, questions? Councilor Reichel Schoenfeld. So just if Council had a chance to look at our uh, recommendations to Council, uh, and if you had any questions or the direction of staff. <laughs> Oh, yes. Can we pull up the report, please? And just the one thing I thought it was ironic because the summer student, along with our recreation, thought it would be a good idea to put a bike um, rack. But I spelled it wrong, bike rack. Anyway, well, Rafe is spelled right. But a bike rack after the mayor was talking about, you know, the uh, importance of biking in Renter yeah. County and that. So it might be just something, and maybe somebody can find somebody on the GG or something like that. So some of the recommendations were uh, we talked about what the um, summer student had talked about. So we talked a lot about that. Um, and she had identified some stuff that could be done. And we still have money in our budget. So um, the other thing too was last year, Kevin, there was an issue with Kevin Clark using his truck and float. So um, the reason we decided to ask council, we're recommending that he use it is it's like a safety concern. The tires for his trailer are put more in. So there's less chance of somebody getting caught. It's easier to put a railing up on his um, trailer. And also the distance between the tailgate and the trailer itself is less than it is with the um, public works one. Um, it was also noted that there wasn't a first aid kit in the hub. Um, they thought there was one before, but it seems to have disappeared. And uh, then we talked about the swing structure because I guess when they put in a spinner, then a swing couldn't be that close. So we're wondering if the swing structure could be moved a little bit from the swim, the spinner at Melissa Bishop Park so we could put another swing in because the summer student noticed there was lots of people wanting to use the swings. And what was the other one? And just other things to just to note if we do the doggy paddle again to make sure we've got buckets and tell the organizer for people to clean up after their dog. Um, maybe when we have the zebra muscle kickoff, maybe having a bucket down there where people could put stuff in and then once a week or somebody from public works just checks and empties it whenever. I don't think anybody has any other questions. Thanks. And we did have a new member, so that was good. So we were happy with that. No question, but I just, for council's consideration, I know we had talked about it a number of years ago, and I don't think we ever followed through. It would be great if we had uh, a defib um, unit at, I would say, at Melissa Bishop Park and also maybe now at Snow Drifters. I don't know what the cost of them are, but I think you can get them through the county. And I know that the county does the regular checks and servicing once they're in place. So again, I can't remember, maybe staff could find out from the county what the cost is and uh, bring it back to council for consideration what it be today. And that would be a great idea, especially at snow drifters for a number of different reasons, having all those functions. Yeah. My question would be if you do ask, and we have one at Elizabeth the Park, if perhaps like uh you know in the wintertime it was located there, does that affect its use or not? Yeah. You can get the outside ones. They 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 are in a cabinet and uh they're okay to use. They are designed to be used year round. Okay. Dr. Buckle. Uh, I have some experience with AEDs through the, uh, the training that I do. Um, the cap, the County public access defibrillation program will provide them, I believe at no cost, but it's a limited number, uh, and a limited, but it's, it's meant for community locations. So I think Melissa Bishop park, um, would very likely qualify, um, as far as getting one that we wanted a separate one for the hub or for any other facilities. Um, they're around fifteen hundred dollars uh, for everything that you need. Um, as far as the uh, the heated units for the uh, winter, they can be done 
Uh, however, you also have concern with keeping them secured. So it would probably be better if we were going to put them in some place like Melissa Bishop that they be inside the building uh, so that it can be accessed by people that uh, are using the facility as opposed to just being outside. Yeah, that was something I thought about as well. We, the biggest usage of Melissa Bishop is always in the summer when uh, people are using the beach for swimming and uh, the activities in the park and so on. So it might not be necessary to have it outside, but just wanted to put it out there. It is, it is a possibility. Just, just a suggestion even there, um, if we were to put it inside, because we have the ability to do password coded access to the locks. Uh, if we put a sign up that says to A to call 911 and B, the nearest AED is located at the township office, or there is one on site called the township office for immediate access, uh, then they could just be given the key code for the door and directions how to get it. It'll work yeah. during the day when the office is open. Right. Any other comments? Seeing that, I'll call the vote. Councilor Burks? Yes. Councilor Buckwald? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reichel Schoenfeld? Yes. And a yes. Very good. So, upcoming meetings and unfinished business. Our next meeting is the advisory committee. Uh, advisory Committee to Council, and which is on September 26, 2023 at 7 p.m. Our next regular meeting of Council is October 3rd, 2023 at 7 p.m. Councillor Robinson. I'm going to be absent from both. Okay. This is I will be enjoying myself elsewhere. Councillor Robinson is on a work this one's not a work. I'm um, going to Italy. This one is a play. Well, this one's be. a play. It could be work. Maybe, but it could be work. Maybe you can check out the roads. I will check. I will maybe you can check play. out housing. How they, how I'll, I'll check out roads. I'll housing. check out tourism options. Biking. Check, Biking. Out, check out the bike breaks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's noted. Yeah. yeah. And we do not have a uh, closed session tonight. So item number 17 is the confirmatory bylaw. And I have a bylaw which reads 2023-45 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council for September 20th for September 2023. He read it first and second time this 19th day of September 2023. Can I get a and second there? Moved by Councilor Rightly Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Robinson. He read it third and time it passed this 19th day of September 2023. Councilor Burke? Yes. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Rightly Schoenfeld? Yes. And the guest, it's Carrie. Thank you. And finally, I have a motion at the September 19th, 2023, regular meeting of council adjourned at 8.05 p.m. Moved by Council Burt, seconded by Council Robinson. Council Burt? Yes. Council Buckwell? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Rocky Yes. And yes. Thank you. Yes. Hey, <laughs> <laughs>